be able to see it after I box it up, but there goes the driver and half bridge down there. And got this staccato circuit, and it's a little too big. Staccato interrupter for it, little line filter here. We got this 12 volt transformer. It's going to power the logic and the staccato. So it's all going to go together to where you know you just all you need is the one plug, and that's everything kind of stuffed in there. Hopefully, that'll work out all right. So here's the setup now with the test primary and that's one of the problems that I've come across. Interference has seemed to be a big issue so for example when I ran it all just out in the open in the test setup it wouldn't really run right until I moved the interrupter circuit kind of far away and had that sitting just right. I was hoping it would partially be solved by putting in this box here but so as it stands with this particular setup I can crank the voltage up to a certain amount but it won't run right at 120 volts so the problem with this is you know you really don't want to be using the variac because the logic needs a, a solid 18 to 20 volts or so DC ramping that up without a separate supply that transformer is not going to output what it's supposed to and you're not driving the gates on the on the uh, switches properly and da -da 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 -da, but I mean it, you could still kind of do it so in my case I'm slightly under driving everything and I'm able to bring the voltage up to like I don't know like a hundred or something like that you see I get to a certain point there the uh, staccato starts running oh. started to get some arc there so the next thing I'm going to do is change this primary around because I think arcing is one of my issues here. It seems like sometimes I can get away with it. Like right now, it's not really want to do it. <laughs> Alright, so I had to move the primary down slightly. So you see, let's see. Yeah, right when I get to about 100 volts, I can't really go higher than that. And then it starts doing that. So I'll leave it about right there. So that's like 90 volts or something like that. But another thing is I adjusted this staccato interrupter to where rather than just get the quarter wave, I set it so I can turn it up to the full half wave. Running the quarter wave ramps is cool and all that, which I've done in the other ones, but you get a louder arc because, I mean, I guess it makes sense, you know, when you're shutting the drive off at the peak, then it's going to make significantly louder pop than if you actually let the ramp swing down a little bit. So I'm going to cut that back on. So I'm I cut it back like that you know here it's got that little pop to it if I crank it all the way up now it's a lot more quiet seven milliseconds or so that's not a bad little window to get a ramp you know you just need the voltage so here's the primary after I've tweaked it a little bit. I basically removed one turn and then I tried to cover it all with hot glue. Done that before, it's kind of helped a little bit, but basically what's happening here is the coupling is just barely too high. It's trying to, to branch out and arc over almost to the point where you can't see it and you can just barely hear it. What I will try to do is use this same primary but with something like a PVC former or something like that and just just barely widen the uh, gap there. I've just got a breakout point to the side right now. And now this is how it runs. So this right now, that's at 75 volts on the very X, so probably not healthy to run it like that. And then, so that's 120. Once I go over 120, I start to hear that, uh, line filter stop doing its magic I guess you could say that's about a foot or so I'd say and I feel like I actually could crank it up a little bit but uh, probably gonna walk out so I don't want to freak it out see what it does with the breakout point just out the top like that. It's going to have a harder time breaking out probably. Yeah, so it starts to wig out a little bit. 
Yeah, so I hear, that's when I start to get them bad popping and clicking. So you see, once I allow that voltage to initially break out, and then current starts feeding the arc, see it has no problem. But when it has a harder time breaking out, and this is without that breakout point is much closer to just a smooth toroid, you could say, with no breakout point. It's so short, it doesn't quite see it that much, you could say. You can hear that sound in the background that kick back into my computer speakers. You know, I don't normally use line filters, but I actually pulled one from somewhere, a nice little handy one that was good for like 6 amps, so I just used it. If I don't use a line filter, I'm pretty much constantly going to hear that kick back into these powered computer speakers. Using that line filter, I don't really hear it. It's only every now and then when I've got some sort of anomaly going on, heavy arcing of some kind, that's when I'll hear it. If I sort of help the breakout point there with a... Just put a random resistor on there. Probably get it out the top. Yeah. Then it still sort of starts wigging out all the same. So with that random arrangement, just the way the electric field is and all that, I, it lets me crank the voltage up, I'd say the highest before it starts freaking out. But So yeah, that's, that's a good foot right there easily. If I can get a circuit like this completely solid and just boom, ramp 240, seems decent enough off uh, 120. If I can ramp 240 and you get everything set up just right, because slight little changes can make a big difference. I'm thinking you can get pretty amazing ramps. I'm just sort of cheating using the mains ramp, sort of like a fake QCW, like uh, Lone Ocean's made. This is probably the easiest way to describe it, I think, and this is probably the easiest way, in my opinion, to go about ramped arcs. A PLL is, is pretty easy too, but it does have its issues unless you make the circuit more complicated. So, you know, he's got this his AC transformer here, except I've got a 15 volt regulator because I'm using IGBTs. The same IGBTs I always use is the uh, 60N65 247 packages because they're damn near invincible. You run them right. Everything else is the same, it's just I'm using a current transformer, so just added like a little 1K resistor in line here, and this is a CT. It's about a 30 turns portion right here is just inserting the output of the staccato and pretty much everything else is the same except I'm just half wave rectified coming in and I've got no bus cap. I'm trying to do a DIY fiber receiver. I kind of went overboard. I was started messing with the uh, comparator setup using a, a light dependent resistor because that's all I had. Probably a photo transistor would be better. So since I've got this analog signal, I guess basically the, the idea is you use some transistor stages uh, and you get the biasing just right to where you know the voltage you get on the base is going to start turning the transistors on and then you amplify it and, uh, and uh, from that point you can switch higher voltages so basically what I did here was I just tried to switch a higher voltage at a, a steady signal so basically I got my interrupter down here here's the fiber so I just kind of hold it up to it like that and get that to switch 
I didn't like how the um, original circuit would work, how normally you'd switch like a relay or something, because you're going to have basically some voltage at all times from the transistor being biased. So basically what this is, is just a shunted voltage where the output of the comparator that's basically zero volts that switches between you know high and low so then my voltage over here whoops if I can get this LED right so my voltage over here is basically the result of that output switching this little transistor through a um, just a high value resistor and these LEDs are basically just switching on when they see real voltage or they're shunted out so the end result is I gotta hold it just right but see it kinda fluctuates a little bit so I need to work it out but that's basically my interrupter pulse at about I don't know it's like 5 volts or so you have to get the uh, everything set up you have to get it set up real good so I basically build like a little adapter here that comes out of my regular interrupter connection into a little module that has the LED set up like this and then the fiber goes through comes out the other end probably a whole lot easier ways to do this using just transistors for some reason I couldn't get it to interrupt the Tesla coil I couldn't get it to get the um, Tesla coil going so it's probably something I'm overlooking there I'm hoping I find an easier alternative to these uh, fiber connections because that seems probably one of the best ways to go but stuff doesn't seem cheap I haven't really seen uh, cheap alternatives out there or just basic circuits people are using for receivers